<laughs> it's going to be an incredibly quiet dull video. So, you'll notice the title of the chapter is combinatorics and probabilities. After today, everything's probability. But most of today is combinatorics. So the big question is, what's combinatorics? What am I talking about? It's a good, big, fancy word. Sounds good. In math, there's actually many different areas of combinatorics. The primary one, though, is we're trying to figure out how many ways can you do something? How many ways can something happen? So I have here a basic example. Some entrepreneurial student has decided they're going to set up a little shop over here in the park at lunchtime and try to get students to sneak over to the park and buy their combo meals. And so they're going to, you're either going to have a hamburger or a hot dog, and then you have a choice of chips, french fries, or onion rings. Okay, my question to you is, how many combo meals are possible? How many different combinations of meals could we get? Okay, how did you come up with that? Because I saw some of you do the math and I saw some of you do fingers. Six would be the correct answer. Okay. You can, this since this is a small number of items, you could go, well, I'm going to have a hamburger with chips, a hamburger with french fries, and a hamburger with onion rings. Or I could have a hot dog with each of those, which means I'm going to end up with how many? That's six different meals. Okay. But mathematically, what could I do? Yeah. There were two ways to have the entree three ways to have the side, and so together we got how many ways to do it. We got six, and we've multiplied them. Okay. There's this incredibly big-named formula called the fundamental counting principle, which says if there's two ways to do one thing and three ways to do the other, to get the ways to do both, you multiply. Okay. It's something we pretty much do with common sense. You know, that was a common sense thing to you all. It didn't take rocket science to figure that one out. You simply multiply how many ways there are to do it. Okay. So, if you're a car manufacturer, you uh, give people 12 choices of body color. That's probably too big these days. They're not, they don't make them in that many colors anymore. You've got two choices of interior fabric to have in your car, and you've got three option packaging as far as what other bells and whistles you want on your car. How many different cars can they make? How would you get it quick? Yeah. You would simply t multiply all the different things together. How many ways there are to do each one separately? And if you multiply it, you get all the ways together, which in this case then would mean there are 72 possible different vehicles you can make. Okay. Think about that from a manufacturing status and the fact of how, as they're building a car and it goes through the plant, how do they keep all that straight? Whose car, what, particularly if you ordered your own car and you named the specific details you wanted on it. That's a lot for them to keep straight and make sure they get the right things in the right car. 72 possible cars just on that little tiny thing, let alone think about all the different models of cars they make, trucks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's really a fairly overwhelming task for them to keep it all happening correctly. Okay. What we want to do, though, is we want to find some mutation. Since the second row is full here, if I said to you, how many permutations of the second row are possible? What on earth am I asking you? Okay, what if I said, how many different arrangements can the eight people in the second row sit in? What am I asking you? How many different patterns can I make out of you all? Okay, because we could switch Annie and Megan, that would be a different pattern. Or we could leave them there and switch Katie and Logan, that's a different pattern. Or I could switch three of you around. That's a different pattern. Y'all think there's going to be 64 patterns? 
You are way low. <laughs> okay. So, actually, yeah, we're going to change this. Instead of how many ways can four people be arranged in a line, we're doing all eight of them. I'm going to show you the why it works, and then I'll show you the shortcut you can do this on your calculator. If these are my eight seats, when I go to pick the first person to sit in the first seat, how many people do I have to choose from? How many people can sit? How many choices? No, you're all standing up. How many people are? can I choose in the first seat? There are eight possibilities. So eight different people could sit there. Okay, one of you sits down. So now how many choices are there for the next seat? There would be seven people left. One sits down. So then there are six people left. And you see the pattern happening here. So lastly, there's only one person left to sit in the last seat. Okay, now what do I do with those numbers? There's eight ways to do this, seven ways to do this, six ways to do that. You multiply them all together. So you would have to multiply all those lovely numbers together. Okay, and you're going to take a guess on what it turns out to be. Forty thousand three hundred different cat three hundred different patterns you ate could sit in. Okay. Anybody who winds and complains in this chapter, y'all come in and make all the patterns. <laughs> 40,320 different patterns we could make out of eight people. Oh, but you got to realize. Okay, I put Megan in this spot. I leave Megan in that spot every single time. I still have to arrange the other seven of you in all your possible patterns. And then I have to put a different person up here and do all the seven the patterns for those. But every time I do those, unless I put a person here, then I have to do all the patterns for those six people sitting beside her. Is it that comical to try to do this yourself and keep straight what patterns have been made? Yeah, it's a fairly easy to program a computer to produce this, but uh, by hand it would be a nightmare. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a lot. Wait, now that wouldn't be horrible to type that in the calculator, but even if I said 20 people in a line, do you really want to have to type in 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times 14? That's the old. <laughs> so, mathematicians, of course, always want to be fast and efficient. So they said, we need another notation for writing this out so that we don't have to type to do all this. So they said, when I want to start as a number and multiply by every single number there is down to 1, we're going to write it as 8, the starting number, and we're going to put an exclamation point behind it. It is not an excited 8. One year I had somebody tell me, oh, it's a excited day. No. That is red 8 factorial. And it means to multiply 8 times every number down to 1. Okay, your calculator has the exclamation point so that you can tell it to do 8 factorial. So when you get there, um, let me... Uh, do you go? You won't. I'm not in scratch pad. Oh, boogers. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. I'm not in scratch pad. I'll just do a new page. All right. So you would go eight. The question is, where on earth did they hide the exclamation point? Yeah. Beside G, you have a key. If you hit that key, it pops up a lot of choices. And the second one is exclamation point. The key to the right of G. So, and yep, a factorial is 40,000 million in 20 different ways. Oh, okay. So, yeah, factorial. You can do a factorial fairly easily. 
So now, just to give a concept here, guys, try 20 factorial. Okay, that's just 20 factorial. If you do 100 factorial, it fills off the entire line and has a whole bunch more digits on past that. You have to you put an arrow and you have to keep scrolling to find all the digits. Can you actually write that down? No, you're not going to do that big. <laughs> you're not going to do it that big. I wouldn't even have any, you do anything as big as 20 factorial because it's just it's astronomical. Now, my old calculators would have gone to scientific notation, but these actually have enough memory that it will produce every single digit for quite a ways. Eventually, you'll overflow the memory. But <laughs> So don't sit and try to figure out what, no, how big can the number go before you overflow the memory. Joel. <laughs> All right. So what you actually just did there is what's called a linear permutation. Permutations are how many patterns, how many arrangements can I make. Okay, you need to get that in your head. Permutation starts with P. Pattern starts with P. So if I ask you to do permutations, you're finding all the different patterns you can make. A little bit later, we're going to do combinations, which is something different. So permutations do patterns. Okay. I think there's like, I've created four methods for doing linear permutations, four different situations that can come up when you're trying to make things in different patterns. And so we are only doing linear, meaning finding things in a line. You can do circular from these permutations and figure out how many ways there are to arrange things in a circle as well. So in this particular case, method number one, this is 11B on the back side of your journal. These methods are there. How do you do it? Um, actually, I should have switched. This is my old set of notes. How many are on the dance team this year? Nine? Okay, so change it. And now we change names. Okay, how many ways, they make a kick line. How many different patterns could they stand in if there's nine people? We just did it. Yeah. <laughs> You would just simply have to do 9 factorial. If you're going to do all the objects you've got, it's just that many factorial. To take 40,320 times 9, it's 360 something thousand. 362,880. Okay, there you go. So, I expected to, to never ever see them in standing in the same pattern ever. But actually, that's bad. They can't. That's the same policy. So, it's going to keep going. <laughs> That was 9, <laughs> I mean 11B. That was, a, that was 11A, or a B, sorry, it's 11B, the first question, how to do it, uh, now, how to do it as far as a formula then, you just do however many you've got factorial. That's all it takes. If you're arranging 50 things in a line, you do 50 factorial. Okay, and I'm actually going to stop it right here because 